Okay, so with this video, um, we're going to start the next chapter, which is about rotation. Okay, so what is going on with rotation? Well, um, to define what a rotation is, we're going to have all points on an object follow a circular path around the same axis. Okay, and in particular, we're going to be interested in rigid bodies. Um, and those are the specific kind of objects that do not deform. Um, and so, in particular, we don't want to think about something like a piece of clay where um, different parts could be moving in different ways, or a cloud. Uh, we want to consider solid objects where all of the distances on the object are going to stay the same at any point in the motion. Okay, so how do we talk about rotations? What is a way that we can understand this? Well, let's say that we have some just arbitrary shape, so some object like this. Um, and maybe we know where the center of mass of this object is. Well, what we can do is we can say, all right, I'm going to draw some line on this object like this. And what I want to do is always uh, measure the angle from that um, line to some reference line. So I'll have this be my reference axis. Typically, that might be like an x-axis, for instance. Um, and this one is just some line I draw on the object, so a reference line. And what we want to do is just measure that angle. So we're going to assume that we have this axis that the um, rotation is going around. Um, I mentioned it's the center of mass. That's usually the case. But it's not strictly required to be the center of mass. If you have like a hinge or something, that would be the place where it's rotating. So if we measure the angle between the reference line and the reference axis, then we're going to get um, some value, which um, our textbook uses the variable phi for this. So um, P-H-I. Sometimes people pronounce it phi. Uh, doesn't really matter. It's all the same. Um, and we call that the rotational position. Um, so that's relatively clear. Um, the term that I learned and the term that I typically use is the angular position um, because it's given as an angle. Um, so those two terms mean the same thing. You can use them interchangeably. Um, so the angular position is just what angle the object is at at a given time. So as the angle increases, the object turns further. As it decreases, it turns in the opposite direction. Um, so notice that um, there's a lot of things that are arbitrary here. So we have the arbitrary starting point. Um, and so the reference axis here was just some choice. I could have put it anywhere. Um, there's nothing special about that point when phi equals zero. It's just any. It's just an ordinary position. Um, also, the direction is arbitrary. So um, the way I've drawn it, we have um, counterclockwise being positive, which is kind of usual, um, but it's not required. We could, for a particular um, application, choose clockwise to be positive. So that would be fine as well. So we just pick one. It's totally arbitrary. Um, and that may seem a little disturbing, but if you think about it, that's exactly what we did when we chose an x-axis before, right? We chose a direction, we chose a starting point, and then we just used it for the calculation. Okay, so um, typically we want to use radians in physics for measuring the um, angle when we're talking about rotations. So um, in using radians, this angle phi is given by s over r, where s is the um, amount that a particular point has moved. Okay, so this arc length is s, and this radius of that um, position that we're interested in is r. Um, and so this is just based on um, a circle, the geometry of a circle. So if you go further around the circle, you have a bigger s, um, which means that you have a bigger angle. Um, so this only works for radians, so that's really important to be careful about. Um, and I'm assuming that you're familiar with radians, but just as a reminder, um, 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees, which is equal to one revolution. So a full turn of an object is one revolution. And for better or worse, um, in physics we tend to use all three of these, and so you have to be pretty comfortable converting from one to another. Um, one interesting thing to notice is that radians are dimensionless. So um, this unit here um, is just going to be meters divided by meters or centimeters divided by centimeters. And so there's no unit there. We call it radians to let us know what the ratio represents, but it isn't actually a unit like meters or seconds that needs to cancel out. Okay, so, um, you know, for instance, if you rearrange this, then you might have S equals phi times R, where S would be in meters, R would be in meters, and phi would be in radians. So you might be disturbed that the units don't work out quite right, but again, just remember that radians are a ratio, and so it doesn't really need to. We don't need to cancel those. Okay, so um, we have a formula now for the angular position. Um, as usual, we're going to take um, that formula and take the derivative. So um, if we take the derivative, we get something that we write omega. It looks like a swoopy w. Um, that's going to be d phi by dt. Um, and we call this the angular velocity. Um, or similarly, the angular speed, depending on um, the context. So the same um, relationship we had between velocity and speed before. Um, the speed leaves out the direction. Velocity is going to give us information about the direction. Finally, we can find an angular acceleration as well. We use the variable alpha for that, and that's just going to be d omega by dt. So that's the angular acceleration. And again, you can use rotational acceleration and rotational velocity for these. Um, I'm going to probably always use angular, but there's no reason why you need to. They're equivalent terms. 
Okay, so we're going to come back to these later, but what I want you to notice is that the way we define these, um, phi, omega, and alpha are just like x, v, and a. So angular position, angular velocity, angular acceleration are just like position, velocity, and acceleration. Um, they have the same derivative relationships between them, which means that any formulas that we had before, we can get um, rotational versions just by making that replacement. So, for example, um, we had before delta x equals one half a delta t squared plus um, the initial velocity times delta t. Well, now we can just make those replacements. So for constant acceleration, we have um, delta phi equals one half alpha delta t squared plus the initial angular velocity times delta t um, for constant angular acceleration motion. So where the first one was for constant a, um, the second one is for constant alpha. So every one of the formulas we had like that, we can just make those replacements and we get all of those kinematics equations for free. All right, so there's good news and bad news about that. The good news is that that makes it really familiar if you already knew how to do kinematics with um, the, the linear uh, formulas with x, b, and a, then this is all just completely straightforward. The bad news is that means we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. So you have to really understand that relationship in order to be able to um, do those sorts of calculations. But essentially we get all of kinematics for free um, for rotation because we already know how to do kinematics in the original case.